your presence thank you for your power thank you for your promises that will never fail i come to you today and i pray oh lord that you breathe upon your word enlighten your people so that we will see the meaning and the meaningfulness of your word in every life in jesus name I will pray, Lord, that the power of the word will penetrate into every life. Raise us up, energize us, empower us, enlighten us in your word in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the people of God said, <clears throat> we're coming to Matthew chapter 8 And we're reading from verses 16 and 17 Matthew 8 verse 16 When the evening was come They brought unto him many That were possessed with devils And he cast out the spirits with his word And healed all and healed all young and old, men and women, everyone that was sick, and healed all that was sick. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself, not another one, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Look at chapter 9, reading from verse 6. In chapter 9, verse 6, But that ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then says he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go to thine house. It happened immediately. Look at verse 7. It says in verse 7, And he arose. You will arise. And departed to his house. And then in verse 8, They said, And when the multitude saw it, They marveled, And they glorified God, Which had given such power unto men. Verse 35 tells us Jesus went about, all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Do you see those three things there? Number one, teaching in their synagogues. He had to teach them, he had to excavate and dig up and throw away all the erroneous ideas they had about the love of God, about the promises of God, about the power of God, about the willingness of God to deliver, to save. He had to also teach them about the conditions that they had to fulfill so that the power of God will be manifested in their lives. And then he says, I'm preaching the gospel. I'm preaching the good news, telling them the time of the ceremonial law is past. And the time of all the rituals, killing animals, all that is gone. It brought good news to them. It brought the gospel to them, preaching the glad tidings. I'm preaching the good news. I'm preaching the gospel of the kingdom after the preaching and the and the teaching after enlightening them and showing them what's the mind of god what's the meaning of the commandments of the lord teaching them and then telling them about the goodness of god that god is good to all to the Gentiles and to the Jews. God is good to all. He's good to those who are near. He's good to those who are far away. He was telling them a new day of glad tidings, a new day of the gospel has now come. After that, they understood that. They knew that all these 400 years of silence from heaven is not a joke. And they all knew that a new dispensation 
and the new covenant and a new power, a new revelation had come to them. Now he healed every sickness and every disease among the people. And that's Jesus Christ, our healer. Jesus Christ, our deliverer. And Jesus Christ, our redeemer. And he's still the same today. In Hebrews chapter 13, reading from verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. There are some people that say that the age of miracle is past. The same miracles took place in yesteryears, but today there can be no miracle that contradicts the word of God, Jesus Christ, our Savior. The same yesterday and today and forever. He still saves today. Jesus Christ who healed in the past. He's still healing today. The same yesterday and today and forever. He delivered before and Jesus Christ. The same deliverer from every infirmity and from every oppression. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. And if Jesus were here today, he will come to you right there, touch you, everything will change. I said everything will change. And he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Why is he in the midst of us to do what he did before? To do all the things he did before because he has not changed. His love has not changed. His power has not changed. And his authority over demons, over disease, over death, his authority has not changed. Jesus Christ, the same. Yesterday and today and forever. We're looking today into the message, the present ministry of Christ the healer. We could say the present ministry of Christ, the Savior. We could say the present ministry of Christ, the Sanctifier. We could say the present ministry of Christ, the Redeemer, Deliverer. The present ministry of Christ, we're concentrating on the healing today. The present ministry of Christ, the healer. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the foundation of healing the sick. What's the foundation? What's the foundation in the mind of God? What's the foundation in the meaning of the scripture? What's the foundation in the ministry of Christ? What's the foundation in the ministration of the church today? The foundation of healing the sea. Number two, the faith and the humility of all supplicants. The people who come to God must understand that the human is much lower than the high God, the most high God in heaven. And they need to come, everyone who prays, whatever we're praying for, you're praying for salvation, you must come with humility. You must know you cannot save yourself and you must know that it is the power of God, the Almighty that delivers us from sin and saves us. If you are praying for sanctification, you must come with humility. You cannot come with pride and say, okay, God, I've come now. They say you sanctify people, I have come. You have to come with humility. If you are coming for healing, you have to come understanding that what man cannot do, that God will do. You have to come. You come to the end of your road, and you come to the end of your way, and you come to the end of your own resources, and then you come in humility, and you are saying, oh Lord, I come not because I am worthy, not because I merit anything, but because of your love and because of your promise, I come. The faith and humility of all supplicants. Number three, the fruit of holiness and perfect soundness. As sin and sickness go together, 
So holiness and healing also go together. As condemnation goes together along all the sicknesses and diseases of the world, so righteousness and holiness and purity of heart, they go along with healing and health and freedom and total deliverance. We cannot remain in sin and say that grace, power, healing, deliverance, the goodness of God shall continue. You cannot go to God and say, God, let me announce to you that I don't have the mind of serving you, but I come only for one thing. I know you have the power. I know you have the authority. And I know you can heal me. And so I come. But God, don't mistake my coming that I'm going to now live in righteousness. I'm going to live in holiness. I'm going to live in obedience. All I want is heal me. And let me go ahead having my own way. And God will say, creature, flesh, a man, a woman of dust and ashes, how do you want me to heal you and give you the strength to go and serve the devil more? If I'm going to heal you, there is one goal. There is one purpose. I will heal you. I have the power. I have the love so that I can draw you unto myself. I'm not healing you to give you more strength, more power, more ability to go and serve the devil, my enemy. I'm healing you because I want to bring you out of your sin into salvation, into the love of God. Holiness and healing and health all go together. The fruit of holiness and perfect soundness. Let's come to point number one here. Number one is the foundation of healing the sick. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the promise of healing the sick. Number two, the peel that heals the sick. Number three, the purpose of healing the sick. Let's look at number one. Number one is the promise of healing for the sick. In Exodus chapter 15, reading from verse 26, look at the promise. And said, if thou, don't worry about what others do, if thou, you are born alone into this world and you will go by yourself to God eventually, thou, you in particular. Don't think about other people. When sickness comes, it comes to the individual. When the pain comes, it comes to the individual. When the suffering comes, it comes to the individual. Healing is a personal thing. And the promise he has given, we come individually and we claim the promise and search it thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. Look at the promise I will not, I will put none of disease upon thee which have brought upon the Egyptians for I am the ever great I am, the ever present I am, and the ever mighty I am, the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am the Lord that healeth thee, healeth thee, healeth thee. He'll keep on healing you. Look at Jeremiah chapter 33. We're looking at the promise of healing at the sea. Jeremiah 33, verse 3, call unto me and I will answer. Did you hear that? I said, did you hear that? You are a child in the family. You are a son in the family. You are a daughter in the family. You belong to God. 
Healing is your family right. Healing is your redemptive right. Healing is your promised right. Healing is your personal right. Healing is your redemptive right that because he suffered and he was weaved by his stripes, you are healed. He says, therefore, knowing your right, come unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. What you have not known. What you have not seen, what you have not felt, today is your day. Call, and I will answer. Call, and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Look at verse 6 there. I will behold, I will bring it, health and kill. It's coming on the way. I said it's coming on the way. I will bring health and kill. I will kill them and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Now you look at Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 5. Matthew 8 verse 5, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him pleading with him asking help of him and then he says in verse 6 in verse 6 saying Lord you see you have to submit to him as Lord you cannot count him as equal to yourself like you are going to a human medical doctor I come. Is the doctor there? I come. Okay, what form do I need to feel? Tell him I'm in, a, I'm in a hurry. Let him come now. Now You cannot go to Christ like that. You have to accept him as Lord. He's the Lord of angels and of men. He's the Lord of heaven and earth. He's the Lord of the whole universe. He's Lord from before you were born until the time he'll come again. And when he comes again, he's going to establish his military millennial kingdom and you little you small you you cannot come and put your chest out and say are you there Jesus come and heal me you have to come to him with worship with humility with a state of mind that says to a subject and he is Lord saying Lord my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. The man said, I'm a centurion. I'm soldiers under me. I'm trained to have hard mind, tough mind. But when I see that servant suffering, tormented, grievously tormented, it shakes me. And I have to abandon every other thing and come to you and seek healing for him. And look at the promise here. Look at verse 7. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him. There's authority in that word. I will come and when I get there, that sickness, that torment cannot remain. I will come, and when I get there, there's only one result that will follow my presence there, and that result will be healing. I will come. Nothing can hinder this one. His enemy and your enemy cannot hinder this one. The Pharisees and the Sadducees cannot hinder this one. Circumstances cannot hinder this. I the authority of earth and heaven, the one that is exalted above every name on earth said, I will come and when I get there, I will heal him. It's coming to you. I said, it's coming to you. And then he promises, I will heal. Are you there? I can't see you. Praise the Lord. You will touch the Lord today.
and the Lord will touch you. He will heal you in Jesus' name. Look at number two. Number two here, the peel that heals the sick. The peel. I use that word peel deliberately. That, that little thing you put in your mouth from the doctor, then you drink water on it and it goes down. But you know, there are people that do not understand that when they take the pill, the fever may not go instantaneously, but that pill has started working. When you take the pill, you might have to take it morning, afternoon, evening, regularly. And then you bring, you drink some water on it, it will work. On you, it will work. The peel, what's the peel? The peel is the word of God. Look at this, Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only. We don't have to add anything to that pill. Speak the word only. That's the pill that cures all sicknesses, all diseases, everything that causes pain, everything that is a messenger of death. That pill, that word will crush everything out of every life in Jesus' name. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. You know, sometimes people wonder, what even to bring your servant? Even if you have to carry him, and then bring him to Jesus, and now you are just saying, speak the word he said, when my servant is sick, naturally, if it's something that normal human doctor's pill can solve, I don't need to carry him. I'll go to the pharmacist. I will get the pills. They tell me how he will use the pills. He doesn't have to be there. And then I go to him. I said, servant, I've come. I got the solution. And then you will take this and drink water. Go and bring water for me. And then he takes it. He said, that's it. In the afternoon, I'll come back again. Is the pill. The same thing with the word of God. He doesn't have to be there. He goes to the great physician. He goes to the Lord Jesus Christ. He goes to the one who has given the promise, I will come and heal him. And then he takes the word to him. Speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. The word is coming to you right now. Now. And as the word gets to you, that word will touch your life. That word will transform your life. That word will heal your life and destroy every sickness, every disease out of your body in Jesus' name. Uh, look at verse 9. In verse 9, he gives the reason why he said what he said. He said, for I am a man under authority. Centurion. Under authority. There's a higher authority. A greater authority above him. I mean, soldiers under me. I am under authority. And then I have soldiers under me. If I listen to the authority above me, then those who are under me will listen to my authority. If I obey the authority above me, then the soldiers under me will obey my authority. And that is how it works. My brother, my sister, the Lord Jesus Christ is the authority above us. He is the Savior, he is the Redeemer. We have accepted him as Savior and Lord. And as Lord, as the Sovereign, 
and the King of kings and the Lord of laws, he has authority over us. And if we obey the authority above us, then all those demons, all those diseases, all those sicknesses, they'll be under our authority. They'll be under your authority. He said, I'm a man under authority. I've been soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. He was saying, I have come. I'm under your authority now. And as I'm under your authority, I call you Lord. All these sicknesses and diseases, they are under your authority. As I command those soldiers under me, go, and everyone has to go. It's not my stature. It's not my height. It's not my strength, physical, and the position of authority that I hold over them. And you have that authority over all the sicknesses and diseases. And if you speak the word, all those demons and diseases, they have to leave. I said they have to leave. Look at, look at it now in verse 10. What Jesus said when Jesus had it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily, certainly, assuredly, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And then in verse 13, in verse 13 it says, And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the man didn't say, uh -uh, Will you not pray? Will you not command? Will you not make a decree? No, already he said, whatever message the Lord wanted to use was all right with him. Whatever approach the Lord wanted to take was all right with him. And the approach Jesus said is to speak the word. He didn't even have to speak the word to that demon, to that torment, and to that evil thing. All the word he had to say is, go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And a servant was healed. And you, son, and you, daughter, you are healed. Amen. Amen. And a servant was healed in the self same hour. This is my hour. I said, this is my hour. You know, when somebody has been living inside your house, you see bold face, and he, you know, you said, go, I'm not going. Find another accommodation. I don't have space for you here. And you come back from office, you find him there. I'll call police on you. And then you call the local location police. Go. He said, who are you? I will not go. And then you call the district police. Go. I said, I'm not going. And then you call the group of district police. Go. And then I will not go. And then he straightened you and said, call anybody you want. I am here. I am here. You see, this unwanted tenant doesn't want to leave. And I've called all the, you know, police that I know. I mean, the pastors that I know. And they have challenged him. And he said, I'm not going. And now you come here today. And I tell you that there's authority higher than the local authority. And I say, that unwanted tenant hibernating there on your side, at your back, in your neck, in your head, in your eyes, in your ears, upon your child, go, I will not go. I come with the authority of Christ. And I say, tenant, 
Not only that he doesn't want your eye. Look at my face. Do you know my name? Do you know what authority I carry? I do you know the spirit of God in me. I said, before I say go, he has packed his load, it's gone. They will go. They will move. You will be free. And you will have your house, your temple, your body free for yourself in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word. That's the peel. Once it enters into your head, enters into your heart, enters into your mind, and the word is mixed with faith in your heart. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Look at Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, we're reading from verse 20. My son, my daughter too, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Verse 21, let them not depart from thine eyes. Now, if you take the pill, the natural one from the doctor. Because your daddy, your mommy says, drink that pill, and you drink that pill. And then, as your parents turn, you put your finger inside your throat, and you vomit the pill. Will the pill work? You have to retain that pill. It has to remain there. If you take another thing that neutralizes the effect of that pill, the pill will not work. But you take the pill of the Word of God, you soak it in, you sink it in, you accept it, you retain it. And as you retain the Word, your healing has come. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. What's the result? Look at verse 22. In verse 22, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. The word of God is stronger than cancer. It's stronger than tuberculosis. The word of God is stronger than kidney failure. The word of God is stronger than madness or insanity. And the word of God comes in and you retain that word, all those things will have to bow. All those things will have to be dissolved. And you're free and free today in Jesus' name. Look at number three there. Number three there is the purpose of healing the sick. Why are the sick healed? What's the reason? What's the purpose? Why the sick are healed? It tells us in Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 16, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his word. He didn't rub anything on them with his word. He didn't shake them to shake the demons out of them, the evil spirits out of them with his word. He didn't shout on them with his word and healed all that were sick. Then in verse 17, here is the purpose that it might be fulfilled. That unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, that that might be fulfilled. That it might be fulfilled, that his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. And whatever God <coughs> can do, he can do. That it might be fulfilled, that he took our infirmities, he bore our sicknesses, that the word reaching concerning him might be fulfilled. When you come for healing, that's the purpose. You're saying, Lord, you're king. 
that it might be fulfilled, you're my healer, that it might be fulfilled, you're my deliverer, that it might be fulfilled, you are the one that sets me free. All I want is the fulfillment of your glory. You'll be healed in Jesus' name. Fulfilled or by what is spoken by Zaz the prophet saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. We're looking at Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Romans chapter 2, we're looking at verse 4. Here is the reason, here is the purpose why the healing comes to us. Or despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. That the purpose, the goodness of God, he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? That the goodness of God might lead you to repentance. And then he tells us in Mark chapter 10, verse 51. Mark chapter 10, reading from verse 51. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The man, the blind man, said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Look at verse 52 there. In verse 52, Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received a sight. That's the healing. What's the purpose? To follow Christ. And followed Jesus in the way. And follow Jesus in the way. The reason why his healing comes to us, and the reason why he makes us to maintain health and perfect soundness, is not that we'll go back to the world and follow the world, go to the devil and follow Satan, go into corruption and follow the corruption of the land. The reason why he brings the healing to us and he makes us to enjoy good health and perfect soundness is that we will follow him in the way, in the way of righteousness. Let's look at number two. Number two here, we're looking at the faith and humility of all supplicants the faith and the humility of all supplicants look at uh, there are three things here number one faith with humility for healing faith with humility for healing not faith and pride not faith and boasting not faith and bragging the pride cancels the faith. The boasting cancels the faith. The bragging cancels the faith. Not your money. You have a lot of money. That money cancels the faith. And then all the contacts I know, I push this button, push that button. I do that, I do that. And then I want to say, God, heal me. You see what I've done? If you don't heal me, I'll do more. You see, I've disobeyed you. You see, I've relegated your word to the background. I'm sick. Heal me. If you don't heal me, I will do more evil. Ah, uh ah, -uh, God, can God be afraid of you? We we'll submit to him first. We we'll surrender to him first. We have that humility of mind to him for us. And then our faith will come out and healing and health will come. That amen is too weak. Three things. Faith with humility for healing. Failure of haughtiness without healing. Failure of haughtiness. God, I'm the son of a pastor. Heal me. Big deal. God, I'm a daughter in this ministry. 
I clean the benches, I mop the floor, I clean up this, I clear this, heal me. Doesn't come that way. God, if anybody is faithful, paying tithes and offering, I am number one. Even when I'm out of job, I pay my tithes and offering. So, God, look at that, heal me. Doesn't work that way. Money doesn't buy healing. Tithes and offering don't buy healing. And all activities and everything don't buy healing. We look to the cross, we look to Christ, and because of Christ, and in all those stripes, by his stripes, not by your works, not by your position, by his stripes, we're healed. And so, it has to be with humility. If there's haughtiness, if there is pride, if there is blowing up yourself, lifting up yourself, healing doesn't come that way. Lord, why is it those sinners, those drunkards, and those people who did not even know you, they are healed, and I, the faithful child, son, daughter of God, and I'm here, I'm not healed, that's pride. You are comparing yourself and lifting up yourself above that leper, above that centurion, above that Syrophoenician woman, and you are saying, I am what have you got that has not been given to you? You don't come for healing that way. And then, number three here, favor from on high beyond healing. Favor from on high beyond healing. Let's look at number one, faith with humility for healing. In Second Chronicles chapter 7, reading from verse 14, If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. In your mind, you humble yourself. In your heart, you humble yourself. In your disposition, you humble yourself. In your thinking, you humble yourself. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land humility is very important it's an essential thing in the sight of god look at matthew chapter 15 Reading from verse 25, Matthew 15, verse 25, it says, Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Verse 26, it says, But he answered and said, But Christ answered and said, But the Lord answered and said, the God of all knowledge that knew not just the tribe of the woman, that knew not just the facial appearance of the woman, that knew her heart, her life, lifestyle, habit, character. The Lord said, it is not meat, it is not right, it is not fit to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. How would you have responded if you were? What would you have said if you were? The healing you are asking for is the children's bread. But you are a dog and it's not right to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Look at the humility here. Verse 27. And she said, Truth, Lord. Truth, Lord. Truth, Lord. Truth, Lord. You are Lord. You cannot tell a lie. You know me beyond the way I know myself. 
you know my private life you know my gentle lifestyle you know my character truth lord that's humility when you come before the lord let's say for example you want to see our group pastor you want to see our district pastor you're sick and then you come and then the pastor is not in his sitting room you say boy go and tell your daddy that so and so is here and i need healing now now let him come and then the pastor did not come out five minutes ten minutes he didn't know i'm the one staying here standing here and i need his attention all right it doesn't have time for me i go my way we don't get healing that way that the pastor will then come and say oh, i'm sorry no what do you mean sorry i've been waiting here look at the time don't you walk with time I've been waiting here. I needed healing. I just need for you to pray for me. I have obeyed the scripture. Is any sick among you? Let him call the elders of the church. Let him pray for him, anoint him with oil, and the sick shall be healed. And then he begins to quote the scripture. Cool down, brother. Now we're here. Now we're ready. No, no, I'm not ready anymore. Even if I will die, let me die. I don't want healing anymore. Why? You're fighting you know, while you're sick. How can you be fighting while you're sick and then you want to get healing? She didn't fight. She didn't say, Peter, hear what the Lord has said. James, John, hear what your Jesus has said. He didn't say, she didn't say that. She said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then in verse 28, in verse 28, it says, Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Humility increases faith. Submission increases faith. Obedience increases faith. Agreement with the Lord increases faith. But when we walk contrary to the Lord, contrary to his desire, and then we say, anyway, he will pray anyhow. And the prayer will heal. Healing is always available. Anytime he prays, is Jesus, he will give me healing. And so I don't have to be subjected to him. It doesn't work that way. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. When is your hour? I said, when is your hour? If we're not angry, angry with the leader, angry with the pastor, angry and then showing an attitude of hey pastor there's nothing you are going to say i don't know we've been here for 30 years we've been here for 25 years and we're not hey pastor you may say can be teenager i was born here and i've been drinking deeper life water since i opened my eyes so pastor we're at the same level we don't get healing that way. We don't get answers to prayer that way. She was submissive and she said, yes, Lord, I am who you say I am. And the daughter was made whole from that very hour. We're looking at James chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 16. Confess your faults one to another that takes humility when you are sick and you call somebody to pray or you want me the pastor to pray for you there are leaders group pastors region overseers state overseers they bring the person pastor he needs prayer if I begin to ask question, brother, you're sick. When were you saved? 
Since you were saved, what's your lifestyle? What's the pattern of your life? What's your character? Do you have any problem, disagreement with your wife, with your husband? Oh, they grow up as so. Say, sir, he's a Christian. He's a beloved brother. He's very active. He does this, he does that. Uh uh. Please slow down. Let me follow the scriptures. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. We examine our lives, we check up how we're living. And if we're walking straight, if our hearts condemn us not, then we know, we have confidence that he will hear and answer our prayer. Confess your faults one to another. Tell the group, Pastor, here is the challenge at home. Here is the disagreement and the fighting at home. Uh -uh. I won't tell group pastor that. If I tell them next Sunday, they will use my example in preaching. So I won't tell him. How do you think you can be healed that way? You're playing hide and seek between you and your pastor, between you and your leader, and you are dying. Why don't you do what the scripture says? Confess your faults one to another in humility and pray one for another that she may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer, not of a proud man, not of a man that is doing hide and seek with, uh, you know, the church. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Give me a good amen. amen. Number three, favor beyond favor. Number two, rather, failure of haughtiness without healing. Failure of haughtiness without healing. Look at uh, Second Kings chapter 5 uh, verse 9. So Naaman came up with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. In verse 10, we're told, and Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go, wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Now in verse 11, we're told, that Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. I thought he was angry. That's pride. That's haughtiness. Now understand, you may not be sick today. You are well, you are sound, you are healed and at, at you. If you manifest pride, and then pride, it becomes a habit. So that at the time you are sick, and you now need prayer, you need attention, because you have built a profile of pride, a profile of haughtiness, and you have gone through life being proud, even though you claim to be saved, and that salvation is in doubt. Now, when you become sick, if you become sick anytime, that pride has become a habit. And so when you come for prayer, the pride, the haughtiness is likely to hinder you. The time to deal with that pride, the time to deal with that haughtiness is now when you are not sick, so that you have habitually the character of humility and submission and respect for the men of God and women of God who are put over you. Then if anything happens, any of them have to pray for you, 
the humility would already be there. But look at Naaman. He said, I thought he'll come out. I thought he'll rub his hand on the leprosy and recover the leper. Look at verse 12. I'm not a banner, I'm farper. Rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. He would have carried his leprosy back to his country. But his servant said, come down. What if the man of God had demanded for another thing? Wouldn't you have done it? Cool down. Come down from the tower of pride. And eventually he listened. And he went to do what the man of God, Elisha, had said. And he did seven times. And his flesh became clean. Clean. Clean totally healed the problem was not with Elisha Elisha had given the word he had said this is the way a man walk therein if he didn't that would not mean that Elisha failed the power was there with Elisha it would be his pride his haughtiness that hindered him I pray that pride will not hinder any of us in Jesus' name. Look at number three. Number three is favor from on high beyond healing. Now we need to understand. We need healing. We need more. We need strength. We need more. If you have healing, you still need a job. If you have health, you still need good relationship with people around you. If you have healing, you still need favor. So it's not enough to say, I have healing. There is favor from on high beyond healing. In Genesis chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 7. Genesis chapter 20, verse 7. Now therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee. And thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all thine, all that are thine. You know the story, you know what happened between Abraham and this man Abimelech. You know the kind of thing that Abraham told him. Why? Then he took his wife. But now God said, restore the man his wife. If he argued with the Lord, he will not be healed. If he said, is it my fault? The man told me, she is my sister. On the strength of his word, I took the woman, God, judge, a God of truth, a God of righteousness. And you know that integrity of my heart, I've done this, argument will not heal anybody. Making excuses will not heal anybody. Diversions into other subjects will not heal anybody. And doing another thing apart from what the Lord had said will not heal anyone. This is a Bible church. Stick to the Bible and stick to the word. Restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. God, what did I hear you say? Abraham, a prophet? God, I don't accept that. A prophet will not do that. God calls him a prophet. Are you higher than God? Are you greater than God? In your mind, when you judge the person who is going to make the prayer for you, and the prayer of that man, God will recognize. And you keep on arguing in your heart, I don't like 
this thing that he does. I don't like this approach. I don't like this approach. You're delaying your healing. Wherefore, therefore, restore the man, his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. If you continue in your argument, if thou restore her not, and you try to justify what you're doing because of this reason and that reason, thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Look at verse 14 there. We're told in verse 14, and Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah his wife. Okay, I restore her. But how can I bring a uh, beautiful woman like that into my house and not do anything at all. What have I gained in my action? And so to force Sarah and do something, because after all, I'm going to restore her, that will not bring healing. Some people say they want to make restitution. Okay, woman, restitution because of heaven. because of obedience to the Lord and because I want God to answer my prayer I'll send you back but before we make the restitution we have to do this and do this and have fleshly knowledge carnal knowledge of one another so that after restitution at least I will know that you have given me what I want before you go that's not restitution we obey the Lord the Lord had said this is what you do and we do that in obedience to the Lord that's how we gauge the healing the miracle and we have really obeyed the Lord in all sincerity and he restored him Sarah his wife. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, so Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech. I pray we'll be obedient to the Lord. And as we obey the Lord, the Lord will grant us favor even beyond the healing in Jesus' name. And the Lord God healed Abimelech and his wife, and his maid servants, and they bear children. Beyond the healing, they bore children. We're coming now to Psalm 103, verse 3. Psalm 103, verse 3. Who forgiveth all the iniquities, and healeth, who healeth all thy diseases. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, who redeemeth thy life from destruction? That's going beyond the healing now. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness? That's going beyond the healing and tender mercies. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things that goes beyond the healing so that the youth is renewed like the eagles. I pray that renewal will come to everyone. It will come to me. It will come to me. I said it will come to me. It will come to you in Jesus' name. Let's look at point number three. Point number three, the fruit of holiness and perfect soundness. The fruit of holiness and perfect soundness. I say, chapter 35, from verse 4, say to them that of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not, behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. He will come and heal you. He will come and deliver you. He will come and set you free. 
Look at verse 5. In verse 5, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. In verse 6, it says, in verse 6, then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing, for in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of dragons where each lay shall the grass with reeds and rushes. Then in verse 8, it tells us the lame rising up and walking, the ears of the deaf being unstopped, the tongue of the dumb speaking out, and great miracles of healing and deliverances happening. Why? And highway shall be there, and a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, the fools shall not err therein. Holiness, healing, they come together. Sanctification, perfect soundness, they come together together. Three things here. Number one, holiness as a precursor to healing. A predecessor to healing. Holiness at the one that comes before and because you have holy heart, holy life, holy disposition, holy behavior in obedience to God, then healing will follow. Holiness as a precursor to healing. Number two, holiness as a preserver of healing. When you've got the healing, what preserves the healing is holiness, holiness of life, holiness unto God, holiness before God and man. Number three, holiness as a partner to health. Holiness as a partner to help. For you to have health beyond healing and you are perfectly whole within and without. You need that holiness that's a partner to health. Number one, holiness as a precursor to healing. Look at Second Kings chapter 20. Read him from verse 1. In those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Thou shalt die. The sickness was so serious, it was deadly. But look at the place of holiness. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, verse 3, in verse 3, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. That's holiness. Walking in truth, not in deception. Walking in truth, not in hypocrisy. Walking in truth, not in lying. Remember how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And I've done that which is good in thy sight. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, and it came to pass, for I said, was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, look at verse 5, turn again, 
until Ezekiel, the captain of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Because of the holiness, I have heard thy prayer. Because of walking in truth, I have heard thy prayer. Because of walking with a perfect heart, I've heard thy prayer. Because of doing that which is right in thy sight, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, and I will add unto thy days 15 years. You have extra 15 years. Say amen. Yeah. The Lord will add to your life. Yeah. Years of joy years of vibrancy yes. and years of strength yes. and years of power and years of progress and years of achievement the Lord will add unto you in Jesus name yes. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 18 Isaiah 57 Isaiah chapter 57 and we're reading from verse 18. I have seen his ways, the way of holiness, the way of righteousness. I have seen his ways, the way of doing right in the sight of the Lord. I have seen his ways, the way of salvation, the way of light, and the way of obedience to the word of God. I have seen his ways, I will heal him. Holiness and healing go together. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. Then in verse 19, it says, I create the fruit of the leaves, peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, says the Lord, and I will heal him. Make it personal. He will heal me. He'll do that in Jesus' name. First John chapter 3. We're reading from verse 21. Beloved, if our hearts condemn us not, we're living right. We're walking in the way he has ordained. We're not doing anything that makes a conscience shout at us that we're corrupt or criminal. We're living holy lives, righteous lives, and our heart condemns us not. Then have we confidence toward God. Then in verse 22, in verse 22, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Number two here, holiness as a preserver of healing. Holiness as a preserver of healing. John chapter 5 verse 14. John chapter 5 we're looking at verse 14 after what Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, you're healed. What will preserve the healing? Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. In the holiness of life that preserves the healing we have got Psalm 4, we're reading from verses 3 and 4. Psalm, Psalm 4, verse 3. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. 
Verse 4, it says, if you know the Lord were here, when you call unto him, standing all and sin not. We don't play with sin. We don't gamble our lives sinning. We don't say God is good, God is holy, God is loving. Christ himself said, sin no more, lest a worst thing come unto the standing all. And sin not, commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Verse 34 says, Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Let's go to number three here now. Number three, holiness as a partner to health. Holiness as a partner to health. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 58. And we're reading from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 8, chapter 58, verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. You missed an amen there. Thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward it says the righteousness will go before you and as you are righteous then you are healthy Third John has only one chapter Third John chapter 1 verse 2 it says beloved I wish above all things I pray above all things I desire above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. The soul prospers through righteousness and holiness. And as you abide in righteousness and abide in holiness, you will also abide in health. If you are sick, it will heal you. If you are well, you will be totally made whole. Every wheat whole in Jesus' name. And if already you have enjoyed the healing touch of the Lord, perfect health. What's the person I'm talking about? Perfect health. The Lord will grant you in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and accept that. Rise up and claim that. Rise up and hold on to that promise of God. Or take the totality of the word of God. Why don't you open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I've heard your word. And I know as I follow from the foundation of the healing, the foundation of the promise of healing, the foundation of the purpose of healing. As I follow, I know you are going to do that, that I'm asking. If you are well, tell the Lord, you need to remain healthy. If you are sick, you want the Lord to touch you. Or maybe it's your wife, maybe it's your husband, maybe it's your son, maybe it's your daughter. Anyone having any challenge or sickness of a infirmity of disease of demonic oppression any challenge you have call upon the Lord and the Lord is willing and the Lord is able and he says he will heal he will heal he will heal why don't you pray he's listening to you and he wants to know whether you are asking him according to his word. And you take the pill. The pill is the word. You accept the word. You believe the word. You stand on the word. You hold on to the word and say, Lord, I believe your word. Speak the word only. 
and my body will be healed. My wife will be healed. My husband will be healed. My family will be healed. Believe the word. Accept the word. Embrace the word. And be willing to live by the word of God. They came, they prayed. He expects that of you. He doesn't want you to just keep quiet. After hearing his word declared unto you, become humble. Don't make yourself a judge. Over the word of God, a judge. Over the worship service, a judge. Over the declaration of the word. Hold on to that promise with a heart that loves the Lord. Hold on to that promise of God with a heart that bends your will under the mighty will of God. And follow the purpose, the purpose of his healing virtue is so that Christ will be glorified, that it might be fulfilled what had been said concerning him. And what you want is the fulfillment of the glory of the, of the Lord, of the power of the name of the Lord. That's what you want. And also that will follow him. You follow him. You follow him. And if there's any sin in your life, that goodness of God will lead you to repentance. You're so grateful that the Lord can touch you and heal you. And then you now promise to live in righteousness. And remember, as we come to the Lord in prayer, he demands that we're humble. Humility will mean you'll not do like, he, like Naaman, Ross, angry at Elisha, angry at the prophet of God, angry at the pastor, angry at your leaders, complaining. They didn't come to me in time. I expected them to come at this time, at that time, acting like a lord. Humble yourself. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will seek my face, and will pray, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. The Lord wants you to repent of any pride, any haughtiness of mind. Pride of long years in the church. And so the word of God is no more touching your life. Nobody can talk to you. It has to go your own way. He wants us to repent of all that pride and call upon him with all humility of heart in obedience to his word so the Lord can say, I have seen his ways. I will heal him. And remember, holiness, holiness makes prayer, vibrant, and stable, penetrating to heaven. Without holiness, no man, 
no woman shall see the Lord. Holiness is not just on paper. It's not just on the sheet of paper, the doctrine that we believe. It's in our heart. It's in our life. And it goes with us to the office. It goes with us to our homes. Holiness goes with us everywhere. Tell the Lord. Holiness as a precursor, predecessor to healing. That you can come like Ezekiel and say, Lord, I have walked in thy way with a righteous life, holy heart before you. If your heart condemns you, you will not have confidence in God. If you are using bold face before the Lord and deliberately disobeying the word of God, say because of who you are. You are a backslider now. Who are you? Holiness favors us in the presence of God. Holiness in our thought. Holiness in our language. Holiness in being different from the world. Holiness is a partner to health. You cannot be going about doing criminal things, sinful things, and then expect that the Lord will keep you healthy, sound, and free from disease. You're serving the devil, you're serving the flesh, you're serving self, you cannot expect that God will keep on healing you and strengthening you in the service of Satan. But holiness, righteousness, purity of heart, will help and aid us to live healthy live sound live under his protection commit yourself faithfully and fully to the lord if you are not saved repent believe on the lord and be saved if you are backsliding and you not play with sin you commit sin just anyhow anywhere return repent heaven is precious God has no pleasure in the people that turn back and go back to sin. If you're a child of God, but there is carelessness in your life, talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't want to remain like this. I want to appreciate the sacrifice of Christ. And I want to live in serious obedience and conformity to your word. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all those blessings of healing, favor, everything, it will add unto you.
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh-uh. But you were quiet before. How did you wake up and to say amen? Now pray. And tell the Lord and say, Lord, all your words I have heard by your grace and your strength, I'm going to be obedient. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Do that as honor to God. Do that as respect for the pastor the Lord has given you. In your mind, in your heart, in your action, in your demonstrations, show that respect. The Lord expects, just like he expected, Abimelech, or respect Abraham as he expected Ezekiah or respect Isaiah he expected Naaman or respect Elisha and be obedient to the word that Elisha had given and then the blessing will come Tell him everything you want him to do in your life. According to the word, tell him and show him that you are willing to obey his word, willing to stand by his word, willing to bend to his word, bow to his word. Not having your own way, not going your own way, not doing your own will, but to live in righteousness and holiness before Him now and at home and in the office and everywhere before Him all the days of your life. Don't make God an errand boy. Go and give me, go and get me healing. And then you are there doing your own way and doing your own will and disobeying his word. Go and give me, go and get me happiness. Go and get me joy. Go and get me favor. Errand boy. Go and get me this. Go and get me that. And you are not paying the price of holiness before the Lord. God is not an errand boy. He's a creator. He's our Lord. He's a redeemer. 
is the all in all and he expects that we creatures will understand we're mere creatures human he is god sovereign and we yield totally unto him In Jesus' name we pray. And the believing children of God said, And the holy, righteous, obedient children of God said, And the deeper life, deep, deeper. And we want to maintain that deep obedience to the Lord and the deeper life people of God said. May the Lord impart that deep holiness in your heart, in your life, in Jesus' name. Obedience to the word, holiness unto the Lord all our lives in your life at home in your life in the office in your life in the boss in your life from your heart in your life in your disposition the lord register and the lord imprint and the lord write that word of holiness of abundance of grace in your life in jesus name and then your health will spring forth speedily Healthy today, yeah. healthy tomorrow, yeah. healthy throughout the year. Yeah. And the Lord had years of strength, years of vision, yeah. years of joy, yeah. and years of being vibrant in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. And the Lord make you to increase more and more. Yeah. Increase the righteousness. Increase in holiness, increase in health, and increase in answers to your prayers in Jesus' name. What are you there? Amen. I said, Amen. Father, we well, thank you. We well, thank you for your word, your word to your family your word to your sons and daughters, your word that makes us to get up and walk in the way that is right as children of God. And we know when we're obedient to your word, we know that blessings will flow into our lives. And I pray that this foundation of righteousness and holiness walking in perfectly and righteously before the Lord grant unto everyone in Jesus name any sickness any disease any infirmity either is just there now or has been there for a long time by your word that cannot fail I command that sickness infirmity disease come out in Jesus name and all the works of the devil for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy all the works of the devil i pray that every work of the devil small or great long-standing or temporary every work of the devil destroy it in jesus name lord as we live our lives in obedience to your word we live in health we live in joy would live in happiness because the joy of the Lord is our strength and we pray that that strength will continue in every one of our lives in Jesus name those worthies of old like Abraham, Isaac, like Jacob, those worthies of old like Samuel, those worthies of old like Daniel, those worthies of old Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those worthies of old Paul, Peter, John, James, all those apostles, we didn't hear that they were sick any time, they were healthy. And Lord, we pray, you are the same God. You say, I am God, I change not. And the Lord Jesus, we know you are still the same, the same yesterday, today, and forever. What you did for them do for every one of us in jesus name 
cancel sickness from every life cancel sickness from every family and lord will pray as we move on day after day we'll be improving in health improving in vitality improving in our strength and we'll pray that nothing will bring us down no evil will come to our apartment. No evil will come to our family. And we pray, Lord, all the promises of God will be yes and amen upon every life. Upon the father, upon the mother, upon the daughter, upon the son, upon our daddy, upon our mommy, everybody in the family, in Jesus' name. Brush off anything of the devil from our body from our lives from our heart from our work and everything we touch will have the blessing of God upon it thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord in Jesus name we pray Now, when you ought to clap, you don't clap. When you shouldn't clap, that's the time you are clapping. Put those hands together. The blessings of God follow you home. The healing of the Lord follow you home. And the shield of the Lord to protect you like walls of fire follow you home in Jesus' name.